Hi, I'm Tony from FreshCapMushrooms.com and today we're making supplemented sawdust fruiting blocks. Now these fruiting blocks are one of the best ways to grow gourmet mushrooms. They're pretty much just a combination of uh, hardwood sawdust, oat bran or wheat bran, and water. These are hardwood pellets, pretty much just compressed um, hardwood sawdust. Make sure that you get hardwood pellets and not softwood pellets because the mushrooms uh, really prefer the hardwood. So over here we got wheat bran. You can use wheat bran or oat bran or any different kind of bran. Pretty much just providing some kind of nutrition for the mushrooms. Um, this is why we call them supplemented sawdust fruiting blocks. We're supplementing them with additional nutrition, which is this bran. Down here we got water. Not much to say about that. And we also got mushroom grow bags. A filter to slip in the mushroom grow bags to protect it after sterilization and a scale just to make sure we're measuring the right amount of stuff. The recipe I use for fruiting blocks is for every five pound block that you want to make you gotta add five cups of hardwood pellets, uh, 1.4 liters of water and one and a quarter cup of wheat bran. So depending on how many bags you're doing just figure out how much stuff you need. So in here you got enough pellets for six fruiting blocks. I've already measured up my water. It really seems like a lot of water but mushrooms are mostly made up of water so there we go. And just mix it around. So you can see these pellets absorb the water really good, and then they start to decompress and just turn back into sawdust. So just mix it around really good, make sure you get the water evenly distributed and all the pellets kind of broken up really nice. You want it to feel like thoroughly wetted and, and moist, but not dripping with water or anything like that. So once you got everything all mixed up, you can go ahead and add your bran. And the bran you want to mix around really evenly into the corners, make sure you get it all. So now we're going to actually go ahead and mix up our fruiting blocks. These are mushroom grow bags, they're actually specifically designed for growing mushrooms. Uh, they're made out of a plastic that can withstand sterilization, they're gusted on the side so you can fold them over easy. And they got this filter patch here, and what that does is it allows the mushroom to breathe as it's growing uh, without you know, risking contamination of your block. These bags make grown mushrooms a heck of a lot easier. Um, I got a lot more information about these on the website if you want to go check that out. But uh, yeah, these are the bags I use. So I use this little kitchen scale just to make things a lot easier. Each bag's going to be five pounds. So not much to this. I just essentially put the bag on the scale and add my substrate. Now once your bag's filled up, I like to take it, set it on the ground, kind of fix it into shape. The other thing I like to do is I like to take a piece of paper towel or something and wipe off the insides of the bag. Um, this may or may not be important, but I find that it helps to reduce contamination. If there's little pieces of substrate that end up on the bag and they don't end up getting colonized by the mushroom, it's a likely chance of contamination. So I like to just wipe off the inside of the bag to take all that out. The other thing I like to use is a filter sleeve. Um, this sleeve pretty much just slides into the gussets of the bag um, before or after you fold it. I find this is important to help prevent contamination again. Um, after you sterilize the bag, when it cools down, it's going to be trying to draw in air. So it'll draw in air through the filter patch, which isn't a problem because this filter patch is uh, you know, preventing contamination. But it'll also try to draw in air through the bag. Um, and I find this filter prevents any contamination from entering your substrate through the sides of the bag. At this point you can take your filter sleeve, slide it in there, fold it in half just like that. So I'm going to make a few more. So now that we got our box made, we're going to need to sterilize them. Uh, if you didn't do that, whatever contamination is already in the substrate, like mold spores, etc., would likely grow instead of your mushrooms, which is no good. So in order to do that, you're going to need to raise the temperature of the blocks really high. So the best way to do that is to use a pressure sterilizer or a pressure canner, uh, something that can get up to 15 PSI for an extended period of time. So now we can load up our bags. I like to put a bunch of mason jar rings on the bottom of the pressure canner, and then Using that in combination with this plate, it keeps the bottom of the bags up off the really hot bottom part of the canner and you know can prevent the bags from breaking or splitting. 
So we're going to go ahead and load them up. Uh, this pressure canner can hold about four of these large bags. Put two down at the bottom. Then you're going to want to fill it up with water. So you want to have enough water so that the pressure canner can run for at least two and a half hours without running out, um, which is actually you know quite a fair amount of water. But you don't want the water level to be so high that it spills into the bag. So I like to come about you know halfway up the bag, and that's usually plenty enough water for the entire cycle. Okay, so now that the water level is about you know an inch and a half or so below the first bag. We're safe from the water not entering into the bag while we're pressure cooking. We'll load up the rest. Now before you go ahead and close up your pressure canner, uh, what you're going to want to do is put something heavy on top of these bags. What can happen is while it's cooking, the bags can actually flap up and, and clog the pressure relief valve. So if you ever had an overpressure situation in your canner, it could prevent the re relief valve from working. So I like to take a plate or something like that and just put it down on top and that holds those flaps down. So now that we got our canner on the stove, just crank her up to max. Eventually pressure will start to build up. Once uh, it reaches 15 psi, um, this will start to jiggle and you can go right ahead and turn your temperature down to two or three usually. Um, depends on the size of your canner and, and your stove and everything, but you can usually get it down quite a bit. So once the pressure cooker gets close to 15 psi, see steam starts to leak out of the thing here and it'll start to jiggle. And once this starts to jiggle, you can go ahead and turn your stove down and start the countdown. Now you're going to want to sterilize your blocks for about two and a half hours and make sure you don't start timing until the moment at which your pressure cooker reaches 15 psi and you know the first couple times you do it keep an eye on the pressure canner to make sure it stays at 15 psi. Uh, you might have to adjust the temperature here and there every once in a while. Also pay attention to it to make sure that it doesn't run out of water. Uh, you never want to run your pressure canner dry. So once two and a half hours has gone by, shut off your stove and walk away. This thing is hot and it's going to take a really long time to cool down. Um, I like to usually leave it overnight and come back the next morning when it's finally cool enough to get the bags out. You just got to remember that after the bags have been sterilized, you need to handle them really carefully because uh, at this point they're 100% clean and you don't want to get them contaminated. So there's a couple things you can do. When you, one thing you can do is you can take them out of your pressure cooker and put them directly into a clean tote that's been wiped down and sanitized with alcohol until you're ready to use them. Or what I like to do is usually just pull them out and put them right in front of my lavender flow hood uh, where they're ready for inoculation. So that's all subject for another video, but until then, take care. I'm Tony from FreshCatMushrooms.com and I'll see you next time.